All right, guys, we are going to start the process of stripping out this really nice looking Dometic refrigerator. It just wouldn't fire back up and we flipped it over and over and over. I even had it uh, taken down and they told me, they said, hey man, it's just solid. You're not gonna break it loose. I even took it loose in here and beat on it. Um, so what we started with is we started with getting loose any of the uh, plastic pieces that they use to seal off where each one of these components go. This for the refrigerator and of course the freezer in there. Taking off the trim pieces for uh, racks in it. And um, so we've got this. Now I've got a whole pile of these refrigerators that are no good. And I tell you what, you talk about one hell of a nice heat sink uh, for like SSRs or wind turbine resistors or something, man. I think I'm gonna pile up a bunch of these. Y'all need some, give me a holler, so. Right. And around here, down here where the igniter's at is just a little rod right here that you push in and it'll come out of that hole. So you'll look here and you'll see it goes into that hole over there. So you just push into that rod and it'll come out and that's the igniter, which goes all the way up into the refrigerator so you can get a spark and start your uh, gas. Um, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. There's screws here, there is screws up in here, and in a few other places like right down in here. And then of course your thermostat uh, lines can just come out like so and just get them out of your way. Down here we've got to open up the electrical box to disconnect everything in it. The rest of it just will kind of slide off and, and lift up and this whole cooling unit that's back here will come off and I'll show you that here in just a second. And then we're going with these five and a half amp Peltiers. So this thing's DOA, we can't do nothing about it. It's a shame to waste it. And for 30 bucks, I get three of these. And yes, 15 amps, but hell, that's 200 watt solar panels. This thing ran on a couple of hundred watts. It's gonna run on a couple of hundred watts. What we also have is some of these, and they are a just a thermostat. So you'll see you have a normally open, normally closed, and center. So we'll be, of course, we'll be running this on normally open to close on heat rise. It'll be heat rise. So anytime it gets above this area over here, now heat rise don't matter if it's in the blue or, or red. Uh, it, that it'll close and kick the uh, units back on. So we're gonna use two of these. We're gonna use one that'll control two in the refrigerator, if that's the design, hopefully we're gonna be able to work that out, or one to control two in the freezer, and another one to control a separate one. So there'll be two of these, and we will simply mount these on a little frame back here to where like you can open the back hatch on your RV and adjust that. So, of course, when you put this in an RV, you wanna make sure you screen the exhaust vent up top, screen this to keep all insects and bugs out of these because they will overheat quickly if they get plugged up. All right, that's our process. Let me get this off and we're gonna show you the next step. All right, now with the screws out of it, you're gonna see how this kind of works its way out. The unit, if you wanna order another one of these units uh, for your, for your uh, cooling unit or your refrigerator you're going to go with the numbers that you have right down here and you'll be able to order one of these for most cooling units today um built since about 83 on forward you can still get a cooling unit for a lot of these um this is pretty simple to come out it's just mounted with this foam and of course yes we're going to put two inch foam back in here a little better view there. You can see how we're just coming off of it like that. And it's not that hard to pull out. You just have to work it. And this one being its age, it takes a little more effort, but it will work its way out. All right, now you see that it's been removed. Everything is just in place. Um, all these parts, they'll just come out so that we can put switches in up here inside the refrigerator. And here is the culprit right here that died on us. And man, it's a miserable thing because you look at the condition of this 1971 refrigerator. It's, uh, it's 
it's miserable to lose it. But the plug is so bad that uh, they did a little sonic test on it, and he said, you know, it, it's it's going to be it's going to make a hole as soon as we start using it. So even though it looks great in here, it it would leak. Um, so. Off it is, there is everything like what you saw inside the refrigerator and of course where the heat sink mounted right there. And now what we've got over here is we have the Peltiers. I know I get a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of criticism because people just don't understand that modern technology makes more efficiency as it makes more products. So here is the Peltiers. These are, the coolers are much more efficient than just two years ago, than your little uh, Coolatrons or whatever you had that pulled seven or eight amps. These are much more efficient than they were before. Um, to control all of this, we're going to be using a thermostat. This is good for 16 amps, so it will be able to run two of these without a problem, because two is about 11 and a half amps. And I've got one sitting over here running. Now we're believing that we're gonna probably be able to get away with just two of these and mounting them through the top. Uh, here is the ceiling level here, the top level. So you can see with the flange, how it would easily protrude into the body there um, and put cool air down. Volume of this is only about five cubic feet. So the freezer will have one in it. We will use its original heat sink, which is a very nice piece of material here, very, very good condition. Uh, we'll use it probably to mount it through the body over here like that. And you'll end up with two up top, one on each cavity there. And we'll probably put a third one in, this one, inside the back back there coming through and put another thermostat so if it ever reaches that higher temperature, it'll kick it on. That's just to be like a safety. So two on one thermostat, only 11 amps, basically two 100 watt solar panels with a little to spare. And this one here will be the same as a 75 watt solar panel. Um, the fact that I am putting 800 watts of solar on here and that these turn on and off and the air conditioner is not always going to run, and it's only a few hundred watts itself. Um, nothing else runs in here off of those big four batteries. So the four batteries in here and one on the tongue is a total of five for 109 amps apiece, 545 amps, amp hours. Now, those solar panels will be accompanied with one pair of Harbor Freight panels that will go all the way across the rear here and they'll come down like an awning. So we'll be able to raise them up and there'll be a grand total of 900 watts of power to run everything during the nighttime. Temperatures being cooler, this won't need that much effort. Here is the output currently. This I plugged this in right before I started this second part of this video. Currently 31 degrees is what's coming off of this. Let's see if I can keep it on there, 31.8 degrees. And over here on this side, it is putting out, let me see my hold on there, only about 75 degrees. Now here in the shop, temperature is 66 inside, 65 inside my shop um, internally, about 75, 76 degrees off of the heat sink in here, okay? Close to 80. Now, the way these will mount is that we will mount them flanged all the way to this point. So this will be a flanged mount and then we will have a thermal seal that'll go between these two points here, and which is uh, as good as you're gonna get for one of these. Um, we have some special uh, LTEC that we're gonna use in there. And then of course, notching the foam out and a sheet metal lip for this to make all this fit in there nicely to where your full ventilation intake here, the air blows out this direction your full ventilation intake is that way. So this is video one showing you how we're tearing it apart, what we're going to be using. Everything will be down there at the bottom of the video where the upload date is as far as parts and materials. Um, anybody interested in these huge heat sinks, I've probably got a hundred of them over uh, 15 years of doing RV work. And if you're um, wanting to see the second video, subscribe, stay tuned, look for it. Uh, I, I appreciate good remarks, good comments, um, but you know, if you're going to say about how inefficient this is, um, don't, 
this is much more efficient now than they were just a year ago and they use a lot less power 5.45 amps is what this draws so that's pretty good when you think that one would make a nice soda cooler two is going to be impressive three is going to be amazing so there's the rest of it right there the parts that you see like this thermostat and these Peltiers, the ones that I use, I don't use the eight point whatever amp ones, I use these. And they're very quiet, as you can hear, very quiet. You've seen that was 30 degrees, 31 degrees. Once it's inside, not pulling 60 degree air into it, you notice that is a 30 plus degree temperature differential. Most of these are lucky to get 20. So if you look in here and you see what it's got, now me handling it, there's 31 degrees, 30 degrees, if I can get it on a better point. So 30 degrees, 29 degrees, okay? And it will get all the way down to about 27. That's about as good as they get. But that is a 30 plus degree temperature differential. You can't get that out of a regular Peltier. The ones I pick up, there's like five sellers. They all look alike. Some of them are black, some of them are red, whatever. This guy here has the best ones and at just under six amps beats the hell out of the rest of them there it is guys y'all watch the video too